Here you are. Now let's come up with a story. It's going to sound strange, but I'm having somebody else's dream. We're dead. A D N. It's headphones, Neil. What's up guys and welcome back to Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, here with my final Halloween 2021 horror film review, or in this case a TV show review. So it's going to be the Netflix series The Haunting of Bly Manor, the sequel to um, the first season called The Haunting of Hill House. So I finally made my way through the season and while the premise was interesting enough, I will say right off the bat that it was not as good of a season as the first one. So where the first one succeeded with giving you little bits of information in each episode, um, Blind Manor didn't quite nail that as well as I would have hoped, just because it felt like it was more all over the place with the information that they were giving. So while the narration was good, the acting of all the characters was good, especially Flora, the daughter, um, the show was pretty heavy as far as introducing the show in the first episode and then summarizing it in the end, but then by the end of the season, it didn't feel like they had presented it well enough to make it worth it. The um, parents of the kids going um, dying was strong, was weird. It was, or it wasn't presented well, and then the history of Bly Manor to begin with wasn't presented well. So it didn't really feel like they, or I felt like they were trying to keep the t exact same template for um, Hill House and apply it to Bly Manor. But even, so even though um, the elements of the story were good as far as the um, all pairs over the years, um, living and dying in the house, the pull of the house up for people to come back, the um, people losing their faces because they are being forgotten and all of that. All of that was good and even for example Flora having the, do the dolls in her house and being called by the lady in the lake who turned out to be Danny, the um, uh, maid, the, basically the Mary Poppins character of the show. All of that, yeah, all in all, was good, but it just didn't feel like there was enough of a cohesive story to make the story as interest or as interesting and more tied together as it could have been. So for me, it was a, a special or it was a specific drag just to get through the show and um, finish it up. So for me, it would have been better if they had. Um, just thinking about it now after the fact that if they had spent each episode going back in time to explain the or like made it more of like an anthology of the pairs of characters over the years and still have the same narration but as they're going back in time tie it into individual characters to have more of that relationship like they did in Hill House so in this so that kind of would have made it better um, for me, Flora, Flora's acting was generally the best just because of her generally positive attitude, her scare factor, the, um, the nightmares with the faceless child and the faceless lady and all of that. So that kind of sold me and made me want to know more, but then with the missing of their parents, so making me think feel like it was kind of like the grudge um, and moving it forward for that Flora's parents were potentially the original owners of the house and even Flora and her brother were um, ghosts as well along with the parents and they only make themselves visible when they um, desire. All of the uh, those elements worked but it didn't feel like it was handled as well as it could have. Um, this is all of course coming um, based on the fact that I have not read um, the novel that is based on so I don't know how they presented it in the novel or anything like that or how true to the novel they stayed. Um, so just watching the um, 
TV show itself felt a lot like um, kind of like a mixing between The Shining and The Grudge, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just that the overall um, presentation and layout of the show was not presented in a way that kept my interest over the course of the season and it actually kind of made me want to give up about halfway through just because it didn't feel like it was going anywhere and basically that was about it. So if I was to grade the season then I would probably give it a grade of about uh, 80% just because like I said the acting was good, the set was good, the general story elements that they provided were good. It just wasn't presented in a way that made me want to, that kept my interest enough to make me want to know more like it did with Hill House. So if they do make any more seasons, that's, or make any more um, series like they did with these two, that's the only thing I would say is while the individual elements are good, it, they need to be tailored to the story rather than having a single steadfast um, layout to them. So that's really about it. So that's kind of where I lose the points. And just because I lost the interest and didn't want to watch is why I took away extra points from the show. So that's all there is for this particular, or actually, but before I do we'll close out the show, as far as recommending the show, um, I'm kind of hit or miss. I'm not necessarily saying that it's a bad season, but if I was to recommend it, I would probably say watch Blind Manor first and then watch Hill House just because Hill House feels like a better sequel and better presentation and feels like more of a sequel to Blind Manor than the other way around. And it kind of expands on the universe of haunted houses rather than um, kind of being all over the place. It kind of feels like Blind Manor being the second season is kind of dissipating a lot of the story. Whereas if you have Blind Manor first and then Hill House, that it would expand the story and kind of tie things together better and show more of the fallout of present day effects of haunted houses and loss and grief and all of that and um, nightmares and monsters under the bed and that sort of thing. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And of course, if you support the show on Patreon, then you get early access to upcoming content, things that I'm up to, um, bonus reviews, and things like that. So um, as a patron, uh, you can expect to see the upcoming content or the, get the early access to the upcoming content schedule and things that I'm planning on reviewing um, in the next few days or so. Um, so look out for that in addition to this review, things that I'm, uh, projects that I'm working on, reviews to expect, and that sort of thing. But that's all there is for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.